Hello YouTubers, Nick's user here. Well, this is a bit of a treat. Two videos in one week. It's almost unheard of, except uh, maybe a couple of years ago when I was very enthusiastic about producing these videos. Uh, but nonetheless, I was a little excited about uh, one of the comments I received on YouTube uh, regarding what about the drivers? What about the drivers? Yes, that's right, the drivers for uh, Windows 10. There are some drivers that are for QXL. Now, QXL is the video driver that is commonly used uh, in association with Spice. And if I just go here and I go apt uh, search uh, QXL, or not SQL, that's going to get a whole bunch of re uh, responses that I didn't really want. Uh, let's go with QXL, rather. And uh, you'll see here we've got the X server XORG video uh, QXL driver. And uh, I already have that installed for Linux. GNU plus Linux, but without any further ado, let's have a look at this Windows 10 clone that I've made. Uh, this was uh, one that I remade today. I, I uh, created this for this video especially. And again, same story, I will be deleting them at the conclusion of the video, even if you don't see me delete them, just so we're clear about licensing and whatnot. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, go and uh, run this up. And we'll go to full screen mode and uh, you can see it's a fairly nice resolution that uh, we're at uh, at present and it shouldn't take too long since we're running off a solid state drive in fact uh, this virtual machine is uh, running on the same drive uh, that my Debian install is on and uh, we get a nice nice boot up there so let's uh, log in and you can see the resolution is uh, subpar because I have not uh, set it in this particular virtual machine and uh, what I will do is uh, just take you to the websites that you uh, ought to be uh, concerned with uh, regarding Spice and QXL. So if I go down here you will see there are a couple of interesting ones and I think the one that is probably most uh, relevant uh, could very well be this one here perhaps and um, the reason why it's relevant is because it, it provides you some detail about what it's doing and uh, I plan to actually demo this in uh, in a moment. So these scripts are used to generate an installer for blah 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 blah. I'm just going to copy this section here and let's see without the driver uh, what exactly happens. So we'll go to our trusty... oh! Nothing there. So of course uh, we can see that uh, what it's promising is not there yet. So uh, that's copy and paste amongst a whole bunch of other things uh, and in fact it's worth uh, worthwhile mentioning now that if I go into the device manager and we look under the display adapter we can see that the Microsoft basic uh, display adapter is there and indeed I can set a display resolution of 1920 by 1080 that's not an issue I can actually do that uh, it's just uh, suffice to say that uh, this might be a little bit more performant uh, under the proper spice driver so Without mucking around any further, let's go into it. I've actually downloaded them to save us some time, and we'll just run that up. And if I find that it's too slow, I'll just fast forward through. So, go, and I agree. I think it might even ask me for permission part way through. It's going quite quickly. Yes, yeah, see, it, uh, would you like to? Install this device driver, the IO serial driver. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll we'll install that and see what else it offers. Kimu, Kimu QA dot exe. Not exactly sure about that, but uh, on we go with the install. That's just taking a little bit of time. Oh, here we go. Oh, I'd say this is the it the IO balloon driver. Uh, no, we're going to install that. And a Vert IO SCSI controller. And SCSI pass through control. Lots of stuff. And now that's been done. And in fact, if we go back into the device manager, let's see what happens in here. 
we're using the Red Hat QXL controller, it's already been swapped over, so uh, I'm not going to bother with a reboot here, even though when I've previously done this, I actually have. So let's uh, go for the 1920 by 1080 Let's we'll keep those changes, and uh, we'll go off to our trusty YouTube page. So YouTube.com/slash. Oh, I don't know. Is it Nick's user? 1980. I don't even know if that's the actual URL. Hopefully, it is. And it is. And uh, let's see what the performance is looking like. We can, uh, in fact, go to the previous video that I uh, uploaded on virtualizing Windows 10 under KVM and Kimu and see if video performance is uh, pretty nice. Uh, let's uh, just works in, let's just uh, run that up in uh, the applications in Microsoft Office full 1080p. But anyway, we'll use um, the ISO uh, image here and we're going to automatically detect that seems to be running. Otherwise, I'll be restarting this video pretty well using a Vanilla Plus Linux distribution. And just drop that sound right down. So that seems to be working pretty well. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I didn't really do a before or after or anything like that, it's just to see that it's actually doing its job. But let's go to the next bit. We wanted to copy this before. How about we copy that again and let's go back to our host operating system, the Debian operating system, and we'll paste. Wow, it's there. So pasting is actually working there very nicely. Uh, I don't know about the USB stuff. Now, to be honest, I haven't tried it, and I'm not even sure I, uh, it's worthwhile trying. But uh, let's uh, let me see if I've got a spare, just a spare USB around here. You can't obviously see what I'm seeing right now, but uh, you know it's worth uh, worth mentioning. I am actually fishing around, and uh, voila, I've actually found a spare USB that I might try and uh, uh, try and use. So let's just shut down this this machine, and uh, I'm going to actually offer it to see if I can um, shut down properly. Okay, so it sent the shutdown signal to the virtual machine, and uh, I expect uh, just in the next moment, there we go, it shut down. We can actually, uh, well, instead of doing that, let's have a look and see if there's, what's this USB director business? I wonder if I can add a USB uh, device to it. USB host device. Well, I wonder if I plug this. Let, let's just cancel that for a moment. Let's plug this guy in. So this is just a 32 gig, nice high speed um, USB 3 type device. And uh, let's just see SanDisk Corp Ultra Fair, uh, Flare. So let's go OK. Let's run up this again and see what we uh, make of it. Now I'm not sure whether this would have worked anyway. But nonetheless, it's one of those functions that you may or may not consider to be important. USB uh, might be important to you. I know that for some people who use VirtualBox it is a bit of a bugbear that you don't get the highest of high speeds. Now I'm not going to do any performance tests here but suffice to say I'm going to take a look and see if this little guy comes up. Now, what have we got here? USB... Obviously nothing is coming up that's native. Okay, we need to format that might be worthwhile actually grabbing one that I know for certain yeah so how about we don't bother with that for a moment let's just go and shut this guy down again and uh, while we're at it I'll try and find the uh, good drive that I have that I know has uh, some content on it that uh, you know might be useful to us again messy desk creative type academic type person and you know I wish I could uh, do some other videos on this type of content that I'm actually, I guess you could say, producing in my spare time, mathematics and whatnot. I've done a couple of mathematics videos, uh, but albeit uh, when I did them I wasn't really satisfied with them, and so I pulled pulled one of them down. Uh, what do we got here? Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to pull this little guy out, this sand disk, and let's put in the Sony. Sony, ah, that could actually be a good functional Sony one. Okay, let's have a look. Hopefully this is the refined one. I don't know if it is. No pun intended there, refined being the EFI bootloader. Uh, it could very well be that one. Let's have a look. OK, 
Okay, and uh, that would be... Oh, this is a, a free BSD one. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, how about we use that? We'll redirect it. And uh, let's just go behind the scenes, add a redirect here. USB hope so here we go. What have we got here? Sony storage. We'll try that one. Good. And let's start up the virtual machine. Oh, did not find the USB device. That's not very good, is it? It's possibly... I didn't even pay attention to that before. Uh, let's remove you. Let's try... In fact, we'll just remove to be sure. And let's add that Sony guy again. Uh, Sony one, and finish. And let's start that virtual machine up. Hopefully we don't get too many dramas. Go to full screen mode. Now what I'd be very interested about actually is now that I've got that USB in, is it possible to boot the USB? Now since it's got a free BSD operating system on there, it might very well be possible, but I think it's more important at this point to identify that I've at least got a free BSD USB stuck into this uh, this virtual machine. Because if it can do all that sort of stuff, well it's going to be pretty fun, isn't it? So I've got these other guys, I have no idea. No. No. Whatever. No. I honestly, for the life of me, don't know which one it's going to be. And at this point, I'm awfully tempted just to format this guy. Fat32 and all that. No. So no, none of that's coming up right now. So that's a little bit disappointing. Okay, what about... What I, I think we might do is at least see that this thing is redirecting properly. So let's just shut down this guy again. Just give that a moment. And we'll see if we can actually change it so that the boot option... Ah, yes, we want to boot off this guy. We do... we will... Uh, that one I would like to just move down to... in fact, this one needs to go. Well, it won't allow me, allow me to do that. Enable boot menu, that's awesome. But uh, let's not bother with the boot menu. Let's apply that setting and let's run her up. Let's have a look. Yes. So in fact, if you really wanted to, if you had a proper USB there, it looks like you could actually boot that little devil. No pun intended. Devil. Okay, so that's that bit. Um, but I'm not entirely satisfied with the uh, proceedings here, so let's just uh, force this guy off and see if, in fact, we can manage to use this uh, this uh, particular USB uh, that I have here that we might uh, might find uh, can be used for some files or, or whatnot. Let's have a look. I have a number of uh, USB and whatnot storage devices here, so uh, it's worthwhile pulling this one out. Let's remove you and let's reintroduce I'm going to have to um, possibly use one of the very last items that I have hanging around here. Um, adapter. You know what? You know what? I really don't. I really don't need this to have this other disc. This other flash drive. I don't need it to have uh, FreeBSD on there. I already have a FreeBSD installed. So let's uh, let's let's rock and roll. Let's cue. Okay. F disk L, F disk slash device slash SD F, print, and we're going to delete, delete, alright, so, okay, new, uh, partition type, uh, partition, yeah, and a type, list again, well, let's go with the basic data. Yep, good, print, let's write that. Okay, so that's cool. So let's go um, uh, make fs dot uh, vfat and uh, what was it? For? I think it's this setting that I need to do slash device slash sdf1. Now, hopefully. I get myself a nice um, FAT32 uh, partition 
and uh, we'll go from there and uh, see. Well, let's get this uh, let's get this guy to recognise that USB. So let's add the USB device, Sony one, finish, and uh, let's get this to run. Okay, go to full screen mode. Honestly, after this, I don't know what. Maybe put a file on it or something like that. I don't know if it can be shared across or something like that. But anyway. Hopefully we get ourselves a... No. What's this? Oh, that's pretty cool. So how about I'm going to create a new folder here. And I'll create a new uh, text document there. And then I'm going to unmount that little guy. In fact, I might even have to do it down here. Yep. And eject storage media. That's awesome. So that's now been ejected. And let's have a look and make sure that that did what it said on the box. So let's mount slash device slash SDF. Oh, doesn't exist anymore. We might have to rejig it. Make you dev aware of it again. So ls block and we've got SDE this time mount slash device slash SDE 1 slash mount slash USB 0 TD slash mount slash USB 0 and we've got our new folder, our new tech and the system volume information so everything's working there as expected so anyway guys basically what I wanted to show you today just to recap is the QXL uh, driver install uh, which uh, supported uh, copy and paste on clipboard and I wanted to show, show you some USB redirect through so it was a little bit of bonus material there and uh, we'll see you next time in the next video. If you like this video please press the like button. If you want to receive more of this content you know the subscribe button just below the video and the other thing too to remember is if you want to get notifications on that subscription you need to ring the bell. Anyway guys have a great night whatever you're doing daytime night time Enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.